Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. This is part two of two of our uh, series two jumbo doubleheader two case break random team one. Part two of random team number one. Basically, the second case. I to throw out some of the old old trash. Take a quick little breather before I dive into another one here. Good luck. That's the same list. If you want to look for the randomizer, that's in the first video. The link to that will be uh, in the video description. So once again, we did this randomizer in the in part one. And if you're, we did the first case recap at the end of the video for part one. At the, at the end of this video, we'll do, at the end of part two, we'll do the recap for this case that we're doing right now. And we'll do the randomizer for the wax party invite. And just double check, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are watching live. Or just refresh your stream so you're at the live point of the most current point of the live stream. All right, the box hopper is. Fernando Tatis Jr. You know what we haven't looked at in a while? I think it's a good time to check in on this. Rookie of the Year odds. So this website, sportingdyne.com, actually does a, does a great job. I'll drop the link in the chat for you if you're watching live. It does a great job at tracking uh, odds, how they go up and down for the AL and the NL. So, let's see, there are a couple updates. May 21st, Boston outfielder Masataka Yoshida is the heavy favorite two months in the season, sitting at plus 134 with second favorite Bryce Miller at plus 917. The previous update was March 27th. Orioles infielder Gunnar Henderson will start the season as the Rookie of the Year favorite. He's down to 25 to one, plus 2,500, plus 2,500. As of now, Yoshida's odds have gone down to plus 125. There's one th plus 134 back in May. And the second favorite was Bryce Miller, but he's fallen to 25 to one. Second now is Josh Young at plus 500, about five to one. And look at that, a Kyle Wright, super short print. Nice one, good start. Braves, Kenneth with the Braves. Here in doubleheader, random team number one. And Xander Bogarts to 72 as well. And as a reminder, sort of the key rookies that we're looking for, Jordan Walker, Yoshida, Anthony Volpe, Francisco Alvarez, James Outman, and Corbin Carroll. Hmm. Rex is saying, uh-oh, yeah, Rex uh, fell on his knee. How high did you fall? 
At what height? There's Gio Urshela. To 199. He's got to work on that autograph, or maybe he wasn't just following directions, but goes to Mark and the Angels. He's actually having a decent season thus far. You can walk fairly fine with limited pain unless I, you move your leg just right. However, I can only bend my leg backwards towards the back of my knees so far without it hurting like crazy. When I do that, it shoots crazy pain through your knee down your leg. A three-step ladder in the second step. That's still, that's still a decent distance, though. To land right on the knee. What does the knee look like? Is uh, are you wearing shorts? Can you look at your knee? But no swelling, right? I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. Didn't notice swelling. What's the, the color of the knee? Is, it, is there a bruise there? Is there is there a purplish area? No swelling is usually a good sign. Do we have any medical professionals in the uh, in the stream? I mean, there'd be no way to verify that if they were in the chat. That. <laughs> backwards yeah that's that sounds like it's got to be a uh, if, you, if you landed right on your kneecap I feel like that's just gonna sting for a while all the Corbin Carroll's going to Brian Corbin Carroll. And you probably got like a little, uh, maybe a little bone bruise or something like that. Maybe, uh, maybe jostled some ligaments a little bit. So when you bend your leg back, you know, probably some some pain being pressed up against there. Did you take a couple Advil? So 2023. I love looking at like WebMD for like stuff like this because first of all, they're very, you know, they're very cautious about giving you medical advice, right? It's just, it's just text on the internet. They don't, every case is different. So that, you know, they're definitely talking about, hey, always go see a doctor, blah, 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 blah. And then they give you a huge range of stuff. And eventually, like, you, you click through enough, like, symptoms and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, it could be bone cancer. And you're like, oh. Everything just ends up in, like, cancer. There's a Mike Trout relic numbered to 199. You know, I'd pop a knee brace on that thing. 
And then when you go home, do you, uh, what is it called? Rice? Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. But there is a recent study, I feel like, that says that, yes, you, you should do that, but there's a suggestion that that may just mask pain instead of, there's all the pools right there, instead of actually addressing the actual issue. Some people actually think, you know, movement actually helps, just keeps generating blood flow in that area. and. So people are questioning maybe the R part of it, the, the rest part of it. But I'd ice it, heat it, pop a knee brace on that. And then see how it feels in a couple days. Yeah, just think, get a knee brace. I think those, uh, a, lot of, a lot of drugstores, uh, your local Rite Aid or Walgreens or CVS or whatever, I feel like they all of them have like some sort of brace section. Give it another night, sleep on it, you know, and then and then see how it feels in the morning. Ichiro. So AL Rookie of the Year favorites, your top handful is Masataka Yoshida for the Red Sox, Josh Young. The uh, shortstop corner infielder, third baseman for the Rangers. Pitcher Hunter Brown. That's seven to one. And then kind of gets into 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 the twelve to one range at Estuary Ruiz, who's just stealing bases left and right. All those thefts on uh, FBI's most wanted at this point. And then it, from there, it jumps to 20 to 1. Taj Bradley, Gunnar Henderson, 25 to 1. Tanner Beebe, Royce Lewis, Bryce Miller, all 25 to 1. Volpe's 30 to 1. Yenier Cano, pitcher for the Orioles, is 40 to 1, plus 4,000. Logan Allen for the Guardians is 50 to 1, plus 5,000. Zach Neto, Nito, Neto, the Angels, is plus 6,000. Yeah, if you broke something or tore like ligaments, yeah, I don't. Th I think you'd be in pain with every step you take. Every step you take. All right, we'll take a look at the NL in the next box that I rip open. Any thoughts on the AL Rookie of the Year odds? You know, if if you were if you were a betting person, what would you do? If anything, does Yoshida keep it up? No, I feel like rookie of the year races are are a little strange because, you know, rookies tend to, although Yoshida's kind of not a rookie, right? Technically, he's had a lot of professional baseball experience in Japan.
Volpe, of course. All those Volpes go to Brandon Hall. All those Jordan Walkers will go to Brian T. and the Cardinals. All these James Altmans go to Stephen Carney and the Dodgers. Corbin Carroll's going to Brian T. A nice gold Volpe for Brandon and the Yankees. Yeah, rookies can get hot and cold throughout the course of a season. And here's Cody Thomas for the A's. And that is for Austin and Oakland. Austin and the A's. But yeah, guys can guys can go up and down. Have hot streaks and cold streaks, especially these youngsters. So at this stage of the season, I probably wouldn't I don't know, I'm bad with futures plays anyway, but and I'm more inclined to go with a longer shot. Is there really any value in, in Yoshida at this point? At almost basically even odds. And, and the odds can vary wildly. So on May 21st, the second favorite was Bryce Miller at plus 917, and now he's plus 2,500. Just a what, couple weeks later, Zach Wheeler and Justin Turner to 2023. Red Sox, that'll be for Jared. So I wonder if there's, you know, some value in some of the longer shots. I mean, obviously, Yoshi's the favorite for a reason. You know, that's probably the safer play. Are there some value plays? I wonder. Estuary Ruiz, 12 to 1, right? Plus 1,200? What happens if he steals 100 bases? He's at 30 stolen bases, I believe, right now. He's got 29 stolen bases at this point of the season. Hitting 260, one homer, 25 RBIs, 29 stolen bases. Two in the last week. I mean, we haven't seen a 100 base stealer in, in, in Lord knows how long. All the Francisco Alvarez is going to Brian T. and the Mets, by the way. Here's another one. Chris Taylor, Kyle Tucker, orange for the Astros, David Duffy. It's a 299, so I wonder, is 12 plus 1,200 good enough for that? Does, does stolen bases ring, move the needle for Rookie of the Year voters? I have no idea. Gunnar Henderson did open the season as the Rookie of the Year favorite. He's at plus 2,500. Could be a late push.
Louis Garcia to 2023. Tristan of the White Sox. Now we got Major League Material, Reese Hoskins. Nancy with the Phillies. Look at the NL rookies in a second. I'm sure you heard the highlights in the background. I think Corbin Carroll might be the favorite for NL rookie of the year. Michael Conforto, let's play two. Ernie Banks. Commemorative relic for the Cubs, Andy O. What victory song does your uh, does your baseball team play at the end at, at the at, 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 after a win? Cubs famously have the Go Cubs Go song. The Dodgers, I think, still do uh, uh, Randy Newman's I Love L.A. I love L.A. We love it. And everyone yells, we love it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. This, this, this double header probably did scare everybody away. Record breakers, Vlad. How many teams have songs written specifically for that team? Like, Go Cubs Go. Like, who, who did the Go Cubs Go song, Rex? All right, NL Rookie of the Year odds. Towards the beginning of the season, Jordan Walker was the slight favorite over Arizona outfield of Corbin Carroll. Plus 372 for Jordan Walker, and Corbin Carroll is plus 379. Kodai Senga for, Senga for the uh, Mets was third at plus 820. Then a month later in May, May 21st, Dodgers outfielder James Altman was plus 137. Over Diamondbacks outfield to Corbin Carroll, who's at plus 202. Then from May 21st to June 5th, Corbin Carroll is odds on favorite, plus 100 after a couple strong weeks. And then James Altman fades to a distant second at plus 700, 7 to 1. Yeah, James Altman has had a rough, rough few weeks. But hopefully he'll, he'll get back on track, I hope. Francisco Alvarez is third at plus, also at plus 700. Ellie Dela Cruz is 1,600, plus uh, 1,600, 16 to 1. Is he up for, is he called up for good, or is he just covering for some injuries? That could be a good, that could be a good play right there. Kodai Senga is plus 2,500. Yuri Perez, 
Matt McLean for the Reds, also a 2,500. Spencer Steer is actually having a good season, but no love in the betting market, plus uh, 3,000. Bobby Miller at plus 3,000 could be interesting, but I don't know if he's going to, I don't know how many more starts he's going to get. Or, or if he's going to continue the whole season, that might, that might be an interesting bet too. Scott Goodman wrote Go, Go Cubs Go. Now we're, uh, of course, the Cubs weren't under, or were not under any obligation to use that song, right? But I guess it is kind of a catchy tune. Rowdy Tellez, and your autograph, Ryan Creedler for the Tigers, rookie auto for Tristan and Detroit. Well, I guess he was commissioned to write this song. He's a lifelong Cubs fan. The song was written by good man at the request of WGN 720, which was the Cubs radio broadcast partner. In 81, Goodman had recorded a dying Cubs fan's last request, a song about the historic failures of the Cubs franchise, but, that, but had been banned from playing at a Wrigley Field. So they were looking for a replacement for It's a Beautiful Day for a Ball Game by Harry Simone Songsters. Which was uh, which is a classic. It's a beautiful day for a ball game, a ball game today. From Walla Walla, Washington to Kalamazoo, it's a beautiful day for a home run, but even a triple will do. We're gonna shout. And boo and raise a hullabaloo at the ball game today. Classic. Classic. Dylan Carlson to 2023. I've never heard that song by Pearl Jam. Yeah, so I guess I guess he was commissioned to write that song back in the back in the eighties. There's Harrison Bader. He's fired up. There's Michael Toglia to one ninety nine. That's for the Rockies. That'll be for Brian T. It was first aired on WGN on opening day and played every game day for the rest of the season. Oh, during that season, he lost his 16-year battle with leukemia four days before the Cubs clinched the division title. And in the next three years, 60,000 copies of the song were sold with proceeds going to charity. I guess there was a modern resurgence in like 20, 2007. I'm kind of stuck. Cordomo, Trout, I 
I think Prince has actually done some songs for the uh, some Minnesota Vikings specific songs. I want to say. Perdomo to 2023. Perdomo for Brian T. Francisco Alvarez for Brian T. Relic card, Eloy Jimenez. The Dodgers used to play that. Radio broadcast used to play that song for a while. I think they still might. In some radio pregame intro or something like that. Let's go. Batter up. We're taking the afternoon. Very those very whimsical songs type songs from the sixties. It's Tovar and there's crowning achievements. Hey, it's Ken Griffey Jr. Home run and RBI leader back in what, nineteen ninety seven. That's for a Barry in Seattle. And for the Reds to four ninety nine. Celebrating here, having a good time. It's for David M and the Red Legs. Halfway through the second case of this doubleheader break. This is the part two video if you're looking for part one. That's in uh, the video link is in the video description below. Big Mac. There is a ska punk version of Go Cubs Go by, by Manic Sewing Circle.
Thomas Bobachette, two ninety nine. I guess the Beach Boys have a Cub song. Here come the Cubs. This is a Beatles cover. Here's a Julio Rodriguez autograph. Wake up, everybody. Take a look at this. All-star American League Julio Rodriguez auto for Barry Roberts and the Seattle Mariners. Nice. Miguel Rojas to 2023 for the Dodgers. We'll go to Stephen C. I'm surprised there hasn't been, I mean, maybe there are, but according to this Wikipedia page, there aren't, there's not like other covers of Go Cubs Go. You would think there would be covers of Go Cubs Go. You, you would think there would be, I don't know, it's, it's a big music town, right? All sorts of music genres that it could be. be tons. It's Aaron Judge. Maybe an EDM version of it. It could be a, a hip hop version of it. Be maybe a, an Imagine Dragons y type of version for it. Reggaeton version of it. It could be a crooner version of it. It could be a country version of it. Yeah, it's got to be it's it's got to be a crazy uh, crazy to hear after a game. I heard it after a game. And we were at the National in Chicago back in 2016. And saw Cubs win. 2016? I think it was 2016. Yeah, I mean, imagine a playoff game. Albert Pujols, piece of the jersey. Going to Brian T. and the Cardinals. You'll also get this Jordan Walker rookie card. Let me 
is Steve Carlton. Triple Crown back in the early 70s for the Phils, the fighting Phils, Nancy with the Phillies. Yeah, what a what an odd yip, right? John John Lester not not being able to throw to first. Cool shot of Derek Jeter up in the air. All right. Almost there, folks. Two boxes to go. Yeah, John, John Lester has Hall of Very Good stats, not Hall of Fame stats. He has three rings, but I don't I, rings don't matter as much for uh, for baseball for some reason. I mean, it's so much more of a team sport, I guess. I feel like for NFL quarterbacks and for basketball players, you know, th those kind of chips matter but although basketball feels a little little more lenient on on hall of fame that's more like stat space i think they include college too I mean, he's got 200 wins but he's also played a zillion seasons 366 era almost 2500 strikeouts he needed like a, he needed to like knock out a Cy Young or two. I think that would have helped. Maybe if he got to a three thousand strikeout milestone. That could have helped. Never an ERA title. A lot of wins, but he's also on a lot of good teams too. And there was really, he was just a hall of very solid and very consistent for a long time until towards the end, but for a long time. And those guys like that are very important, but there was never really like a run of, you know, if he had like a, I don't know, five year run of dominance or something like that. You know, maybe two Cy Youngs in five years or a third late in a career, something random like that. Some ERA titles, maybe 3,000 strikeouts or something like that. Maybe that would have helped, but I think Baseball Reference has a bunch of different Hall of Fame metrics saying just under maybe. Black Ink says pitching eight. The average Hall of Famer has a score of 40. Gray Ink says 148. Average Hall of Famer is 185. Hall of Fame Monitor has him at 98. Likely Hall of Famer 100. That's the, that's the closest one. Hall of Fame Standards has him at 40. And average Hall of Famer has 50 in terms of their statistic scoring.
he could be like a. Well, some writers give him some leeway because he helped break the 108, 108 year World Series curse. But he didn't even win. See, now, if he won World Series MVP, then I think you can make a better case of that. But I don't think he won World Series MVP. You know, like if he was, you know, I think that would have, I, maybe that would have carried a little more weight. Andrew Vaughn, Bryce Harper. No, I think, I don't think John Lester's a Hall of Famer. But he did play for a long time. And for, uh, for highly popular teams like the Red Sox and the Cubs. So maybe he makes friends who ends up on the uh, Veterans Player Committee and they, uh, they vote him in after his Hall of Fame eligibility runs out. Redemption. Any guesses on the redemption? There's uh, Wisniewski for the Cubs to 2023. Oh, the coveted NLCS MVP. Wow. <laughs> Everyone counts those. Everyone's just like, oh man. You know how many how many CS MVPs this guy won? I don't think I've heard anyone ever use CS MVPs as a as as part of their case for a player's MVP campaign. There's JT Real Muto to 299. I'll go to the Phillies. That's for Nancy. Tyler Freeman to 2023. 
we got a relic card. Michael Harris. Rookie relic for the Braves. That's for Kenneth and the Bravos. There's a Yoshida gold, nice. That is for Jared. Nice. And the relic, triple crown winner, Carl Yastrzemski. Yes. Uh-oh. This is the... <laughs> you know this is a long break when I think I've seen this episode of Quick Pitch already. Gotta change the channel, sorry. It's too much. Too much quick pitch. Some tennis on the tennis channel. These French Open's happening. Alec Mano, hopefully he figures things out. All right, see you guys. All right, final box. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, the redemption, no, no guesses. I was gonna give away a million dollars. It's Jordan Walker. Nice. Brian T with the Cardinal. Second to last auto. Nice Jordan Walker auto. Sign your cards, Jordan. Don't be a redemption guy. You don't wanna be a redemption guy. Public service announcement, don't be a redemption guy. Future pro athletes. Uh, I have seen that video. Was that it? Was that a high school game or was it a college game? I thought it might have been a college World Series game. Maybe it was a high school game. I remember that. That happened a little while back. What round of the, of the French Open are we in? Come on, Tennis Channel. You're supposed to tell me these things. Bad job by the tennis channel. Oh, is it high? Is it high school? I remember the. I remember the the incident. I don't. I don't remember their faces. Final box. We made it. We made it to the end. Well, it's just you and me, Rex. No, KT is here. Need some pirates in this last box. 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, pirates. Zach Plesak to 300. And something piratey. I mean, there's definitely pirates in here. All cards ship, but maybe a numbered card, an auto, some sort of parallel. A relic? Miguel Vargas. Alas, not a Pirates autograph. There you go. Brian's watching. Oh, you're watching on the TV. Nice. Yeah, nice Jordan Walker. Black parallel, too. Maybe numbered. Maybe it's this, actually. All right? So it should be, it says 199, probably out of 199. Nice Miguel Vargas, though. Stephen Carney and the Dodgers. All right, now we got to find KT, maybe some sort of pirate numbered card, pirate relic. There's two more relics. You know, there's, we've got some pirates here, but so we'll get, still get something. But we want, we want something else. Rooting for KT, staying up late with me. There's Emmanuel Vera to 2023. Looking for some buckos. Oh, that's an upset. It's a 14 seed being a 7 seed. Oh, that last, <laughs> last point went fast. 6-1. We got uh, Alexa Diaz to two ninety nine for the Reds. David M. Segura Green to four ninety nine. Eric and the Marlins. All right, last half. the semifinals. Coco Goff in the semis, nice. No, these must be the quarters going into the semis. That's what it is. Nope, that's not the Francisco we're looking for. Looking for Mr. Alvarez, not Mr. Lindor. Hunter Dozier and Hayden Wisniewski to 2023 for the Cubs. It'll be for Andy. Bubba Thompson and Jazz Chisholm. Piece of his lumber going to Eric and the Marlins. A 
and another Corbin Carroll for Brian T. Those will all add up. Two ninety nine. Ernie Banks. Let's play two. Let's play two, Andy. We did play two. This is the last little pile of the double header. And this is part two of the double header. And the last little stack of the double header. We got a silver Pirates card right here, PNC Park card. Sorry, Kevin, I wish there was more than just a stack of uh, Pirates cards. We appreciate you getting in. Appreciate everybody getting in one way or the other. Thanks to the thanks to like Rex who's keeping me company throughout the break and everybody else. Silver packs. Could be auto or numbered card opportunities here. Not all the time, but sometimes. Vientos, Rodon, Sanga. There's the numbered card. Dylan Cease to 25. That will be for the White Sox. Tristan with the White Sox. And there you go, gang. Done and done. Now, before I do this recap, let's, uh, let's give away that wax party spot, that invite to the wax party. You're going to be guaranteed some wax if you're in. That's the party favor. One through 30, new dice, new list, and name on top after eight gets the invite. Good luck, everybody. Two and a six, eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight after eight times thanks everyone for giving this a shot Oof, brandon very close but not quite this time we'll get him next time but after eight congrats to eric eric christensen with the wax party invite after eight there you go gang thanks everybody for making this happen this was part two of the double header the second case Got that nice Jordan Walker, that gold Yoshida. A lot of fun. The Julio Rodriguez, of course. I'm going to snap a picture of that. So a lot of great stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and that, if you're wondering what's so special about that Kyle Wright, that's a super short print. So that's pretty awesome, too. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazzpeacecasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Um, we've got another doubleheader in the store if you want to run that back tomorrow. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. Bye-bye.